All right, everybody feel it good. Get loud. That's how we're going to start this. All right, here we go. The whole reason they stifled innovation was because of fossil fuel and, and, and the way they're currently producing energy, and it is not sustainable. So I want everybody to imagine, right? Your neighbors, your friends, your family, people around you that you love are getting sick. They're getting cancer, they're getting leukemia, they're having brain tumors at a higher rate than normal. This is what was going on for me early in 2015, 2016. I lived in a neighborhood in Lake Norman, North Carolina started my third business with my business partner, getting into solar at the time. And I started the solar business thinking that I would allow and empower people to own their power, not rent their power. That I would help create energy independence. Because we all know we get tired of paying the utility company, right? The power outages and all that. So I thought, hey, this is a great thing to get into. It's the future. But we were struggling. Year one, we lost money. For 22 months, we didn't get a paycheck. Me and my partner, no paycheck for 22 months building this business. Had 34 employees, thought about closing in 2015, sat down with my family. I'm like, what do I do? We're going to have to shut down shop. We're losing money. This has never happened before. You know, I've always felt like I, I, I hit lightning. I was working hard. I was grinding. I was making things happen, and I just hit a wall. And at the same time, my wife, while we were living on this lake, had a pick line in her arm having antibiotics going into her body. And the doctor said, I think you've got a staph infection. My son's eyes were all dark. It was just chaos. And here I am trying to build this business, not getting paid. We're in this nice, big, multi-million dollar home on the lake. So I had to go to my family and I said, look, we're gonna have to sell this house. We're gonna have to put all the money in the business. We're gonna double down and bet on me. Bet on what I believe in. I want people to own their power. You gotta trust me. Wife gave me the stink eye. Kids got fired up, right? Why are we moving, dad? Why are we downsizing? It's what we gotta do. This is what we gotta do when things happen. You gotta be able to transition. You gotta be able to pivot. You gotta be able to find that defining moment. That's what we're here talking about today. Well, here's what happened after I sold that house and I moved into another house that was smaller. We were there for a few months and two things hit me. One, my family got healthier. No more dark circles. My wife didn't need a pick line. And two, I realized at that moment that I had a bigger purpose to run this solar company than just empowering people to own their power. But it was to help save our planet, our lakes, our streams, our drinking water that's contaminated all the time from this coal ash. I just showed you the video of this. This stuff has lead, mercury, radium in it. It's radioactive. They have coal ash basins out there that some are, uh, some are filtered, some aren't, some are layered, some not. They just leak through and get into the groundwater. People drink this stuff. If you drink well water and you're near a contaminated uh, lake or pond near the utility company, one in 50 can catch cancer. One in 50. 2%, but the utility companies are never held accountable. And I'm not big and bad enough to go against them, so the best thing I can do is take customers from them so they quit creating burning coal and ruining our environment and charging us astronomical rates for power. It just doesn't make sense. Another defining moment, building the business up. You know, like they mentioned before, we, we got this up to a billion dollar business, but it didn't happen overnight. First two years, we lost money, didn't get paid, check. But one thing we noticed when we hit COVID and we were continuing to grow. We have a, a belief in, in solar that people should own their power, but they should also store their energy on purpose. Because let me give you a stat here. In 2020, 133 billion hours of power outages is what happened. COVID also happened in 2020. So people are at home with their kids and their family and they're trying to work from home and their kids are trying to do school from home. The power just keeps going out. Everybody realizes that the power keeps going out. It was up 73% from 2019 to 2020 and it's not getting any better. Electric cars are here. We need the energy and power. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna produce it? We're gonna burn more coal? What are we gonna do? 
So it's our responsibility. And I felt like that was part of my mission. And during COVID, we talked about shutting the doors. Another defining moment. We had an executive meeting, COVID hit. We had about 700 employees at the time. We were getting on calls every hour on the hour with attorneys, health departments, CDC, you name them, we were talking to them. Should we stay open? Should we close? What do we do? We had an argument with the executives. Like there was a disagreement, how do we handle this? Should we furlough, should we shut it down? What should we do? Take a time out, come back in six months if this thing goes away? This was March in 2020. Me and a couple of the other executives discussed and said, no, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take ourselves off payroll. We're gonna tell our vendors, you ain't getting paid till summertime. And we're gonna stay open in case Jennifer, who's a call center rep, needs to pay her mortgage or buy diapers. Or Mike, who's an installer, needs to pay for hopefully a solar bill or his power bill, right? We elected to stay open and we empowered our people because look, fear is with everybody. People have their own fear. We told them, look, you wanna stay home? Stay home, right? We'll make you inactive. And you're ready to come back, you can come back. We, we'll pay your vacation PTO time, but we have to stay open for the employees that need to provide for their families. And what we realized is we had about 700 employees before COVID. We're sitting with 2,200 employees now. And the reason is we got our employees involved and told them what we were doing for them. We took the executives off payroll for five or six months. We invested and reinvested in infrastructure to allow people that needed to provide for their families to come to work. And in a time of need, when this country was going through this crisis, there were more power outages than any, anything before, any time they've ever seen. So we started doubling down on the batteries and storage, and that was a defining moment to take it to the next level in the business and build it. We all run into these, these times where we think we can't make a decision. We're too scared to make a decision. We allow other people to dictate our life. We don't make our own map. I'm a big believer in that when things are backed up, you're backed up against the wall, you're gonna have to break through that wall and do something about it. You know, and it didn't happen overnight. I've been building businesses, but you know, when I was 18 years old and my girlfriend at the time was 17, she was pregnant with our daughter when she was 16, but she had her when she was 17. You know, her family didn't want us to have this kid. They, her family tried to force her to have an abortion, tried to give her up for adoption. The day that my daughter was born, I tried to go see her in the hospital. My girlfriend at the time was 17. Her mom put her under an alias name. I saw her family go into the hospital. I saw the car, I walked in there with a Polaroid camera. It's just 1998. I'm all jacked up, excited to see my daughter born. I'm 18 years old, I'm a young man, I'm not an adult. But I was like, I'm so excited. I wanna see my kid, but I'm gonna guy the Polaroid camera, the pictures come out, I was all jacked. Walk in there and I say, hey, I'm here to see Elizabeth Stalvey. And this is nobody by this name. So what do you mean there's nobody by this? I just, I just saw her family. She told, she's getting induced. She, she told me, like, I'm here to see my daughter born. I said, there's no one here by this name. She actually went under an alias name. They don't want you here. But here's what you can do, Mr. Waller. You can go up there. This is back when you can go to the nursery and look at kids. You can go up there and take pictures of all the kids you want, but you won't see their names. So here I am taking pictures of about nine kids, not knowing which one's mine. Heartbroken, upset. Again, my back against the wall. Defining moment, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna tolerate this? I knew that my girlfriend was worried. Her mom, the day that she had my, our daughter, Hannah, she, she talked about she was gonna call social services. She didn't think she deserved to have a kid, wasn't ready to have a kid. And I knew it wasn't her mom's choice. I knew that we had that choice, that I was 18, that she was 17, that we wanted to have this kid, we can do that. So I went and got an attorney the next day and I tried to sue for, for joint custody. I got to see my daughter seven days later. But two lives changed when I went and did that. One, my daughter came to this world. And two, I wasn't going to allow anybody to dictate what I'm going to do with my life. Nobody can tell me because I didn't go to college that I can't run a business. Nobody can tell me that I'm 18 years old and I can't have a kid. That's my right. And we all have the right to live our lives the way we want to live them. And we get too caught up in trying to be sheep and letting other people dictate our lives and tell us what we need to do and putting pressure on us that if you don't do this, you're not acceptable. If you don't hit this, you're not worthy. And that's just noise. You have to make decisions in your life that change for the best for you and the loved ones you care about. Nobody else. And sometimes that means not listening to family members. Sometimes that means not listening to best friends, teachers. Sometimes they're wrong. This is your life. Okay, and happiness doesn't come, you know, success doesn't equal, hey, I, I've hit this 
plateau in business and I'm making this much money. That is not success. Success is fulfillment. And too many people try to chase something that is tangible and they're not chasing to fill themselves in. And like when my daughter was born, I knew that I wanted to be it. Now, the great news is as I ended up marrying that girl, we have four kids, two grandkids. We got a great relationship with my mother-in-law. But if I wouldn't have stood up for myself, stood up for my girlfriend at the time, my daughter at the time, I wouldn't have four kids right now and two grandkids. If I wouldn't have fought back and, and tried to you know, find out a reason to help build this business and have a bigger mission than just profits, but really look at saving the planet, we wouldn't have grown the way we've grown. If our team wouldn't have given back to the company and took the risk to go off payroll and stay open for the employees and the customers that wanted the service, the employees that need to provide for the family, we might have shut down. You know, we're proud of what we're doing with 2,200 employees. We're excited about the impact we can have on the world. And I'm not here to promote my business. I'm here to promote defining moments and changing the world. You don't get a rerun, you don't get a replay at all. This is it, this is your runway, this is what you got. And there's one thing I know is nobody ever wants to live with regret. I watched my dad, blue collar guy, didn't finish high school, my mom didn't finish high school, and my mom worked at a bakery, my dad worked at AT&T, and we helped deliver papers at night, and I watched him struggle, and he had an opportunity with a friend of his to open up a business, and he chose not to. He chose to play it safe. He chose to play not to lose. And I know some of you out there are like, oh yeah, I'm just going to play it safe. This is the right way. Don't play it safe. Play to win. Don't play to not lose. Don't play prevent. Play to win. You get one shot, try to win. Give it your best. Be fail forward. You learn from failures. That's how this world works. You can't sit there and have regret. The, my old man is a great person and he did what he did, but he had regret his whole life. He still does. I could have opened a business. I told myself, I don't want to be like that. If the unicorn comes by, I'm jumping on and I'm riding it till the wheels fall off. That's how it's going to work. Because if I don't, then I'll have regret. Man, I should, I could, I would have. No, maybe you're going to a job you don't like, quit. Maybe you're with someone you can't stand this bringing you down. Leave them. Like, what are you doing? You got one shot to be fulfilled and find happiness. It's time to do that. It's time to make your defining moment. I'm going to leave you guys with this. I have a co-host on my podcast that brought this up to me, and it's one of the things I live by and I love, and I heard it, and I think you guys are going to love this. He said, Jason, what's the difference between a cow and a buffalo? I was like, cow and a buffalo? I mean, one's got like, you know, hairy and bigger. I don't know. What's the difference? He said, when there's a storm, it's raining, there's hail, thunder, lightning coming, a cow sees the storm and it runs away from the storm. So it's running, the storm's coming over it. He said, but a buffalo senses the storm, the rain, the hail, the thunder. It runs through the storm. So to put that in perspective, what do we do with our problems and our fears and our struggles? We try to run from them try to stick them under the rug. We get anxiety, we get depression, we feel less than, we get insecure because we're running and hiding like a cow from the storm, from the problems in life. But when you act like a buffalo and you punch that storm right in the face and you run right through it, the sunshine is on the other end. You can look, but you're not gonna look backwards. Your eyes are in front of you for a reason. You're a buffalo, you get through it. You live with zero regrets because you busted through that. You didn't say, what if, should I, could I? You didn't sit there and let things hold you back. You went and dealt with the problems and you moved on. When you do that, you are capable of making huge defining moments in your life. And it's not about who you are, what you own or how you are in business. It's feeling fulfilled. So I ask everybody, are you gonna be a cow? Or are you going to be a buffalo in life? And I say you guys need to be a buffalo. Bam!